Hey guys, my name is Savannah and today we have a new dev diary from Prehistoric Kingdom. This update is for February 2023 as you can see on the screen here. First and foremost, before we jump into this, I have been sick for quite a while now. So if my voice sounds a little off, that's why I apologize, but I didn't want to miss the chance to talk about this dev diary. Also, for that reason, I will not be editing this video. I'm doing it one shot. We're getting it over with because that's all the voice I have for today. So stick with me. I'm very excited. Let's just go ahead and jump in. This first part of this here uh, talks about update five, which already released. So if you have the game, make sure you have updated and you will get all the features that came in update five on this website here. You can check out the patch notes that came with that. Um, but today we're just talking about the dev diary. So jumping right in to where we're at. The team is concurrently working on a handful of updates that we hope to release in the first half of 2023, focusing on new gameplay features and further development on animal AI. While saying is easier than doing, this year we're trying to be more frequent and consistent with our updates. And I think so far they're doing a really good job. I have... I've heard quite a lot from Prehistoric Kingdom, so we're off to a good start this year. The research system, even if its initial offerings were quite basic, was our first step towards that goal in addition to the two other patches released in February. We want to, be, we want to better maintain the game by releasing fixes and general updates in a more frequent manner between larger releases targeting additions that help the game find a better footing while we work on the big stuff. I'm excited for this. I'm also excited that we're getting into more gameplay management type things. Right now, as Prehistoric Kingdom's current state, I really have only played as a sandbox building game, but I am very excited for all those management things to kind of get more fleshed out, updated, and then we'll jump in and actually play it as, as a game, as a Park Tycoon game. So I'm excited for that. We've learned a lot from 2022, and that extends to our animal roster. There are a lot of amazing prehistoric creatures in our backlog, so we've made some adjustments to help release them. Throughout the year, we'll be including animals in our big themed updates, as you'd expect, just like the desert one back in December. However, we also have them sprinkled throughout 2023 to occasionally coincide with a few smaller gameplay updates. Always love to hear that more animals are on the way. I mean, obviously we know more animals are on the way because there's not very many in the game right now, but still exciting to hear that they're going to sprinkle them throughout the year so we never really go wanting uh, for too long without a new animal added into the game. The team hopes that by the end of the year, there should be quite a few new faces running around in your parks. You might just meet one of them very soon. In February, we were able to have two new members join the team. They've been settling in, helping to balance parts of the game and begin to work on some new developments. This includes modular grass masking, a huge quality of life change that auto removes grass under certain pieces such as floors and feeders. Oh, that's fantastic. Because right now when I open up the game and I start building, I kind of paint everything with either like dirt or the pebbles just to get rid of the grass texture so it doesn't stick through the bottom of my floors and things like that. Uh, this That's fantastic if it'll do it on its own because then that's one less step for me. <clears throat> Moving right on to animals. Right now we are heavily overhauling the technical side of animals, improving their locomotion, AI, and responsiveness. We've we're putting more resources into them than ever before. In parallel to all the coding, the animation team has been creating the new animations required for this revamped locomotion, locomotion system. Stripes walking backwards, turning on the spot while walking and even trotting are all part of our endeavor to create more convincing and responsive animal movements. You can see some of our tests below. I think this is awesome because correct me if I'm wrong, I can't actually think of a game where animals walk backwards. When I saw this update and I first read through it, 
that really kind of stuck out as, at me. And I, I think it's awesome because obviously in real life, animals would be able to walk backwards, sideways, forward, all kinds of things. So I think that they're thinking about those little details is really going to pay off in the long run and make more convincing animals. Um, so you can see down there little trotting gifts, walking sideways, backwards. And again, I'm just always reminded how gorgeous these creatures actually are in the game. So I am so excited for them to add more animations, make them more lifelike. It just means I'm going to spend more time in the game uh, staring at them, walking around in the exhibits that I'm making. So very excited about that and very excited about this as well, swimming. And I love that they use the T-Rex as their little model. So this includes swimming too. This upcoming traversable feature has been designed to use the same types of animations, allowing animals to strafe or go backwards even when in the water. It's all intentionally built to fluidly go between states rather than rigidly stop and start, which I think is great. I love when they kind of mesh together and you don't really get that stark difference between an animation when it starts and when it's over. You know, the animal kind of has that like pause moment where it's almost like you can see the wheels turning in its head and it's deciding what it wants to do next. I know that is complete anthropomorphism of a video game animal, but that's kind of how I think about it in my mind. So very exciting that they're going to be swimming. I love this little test gif of the T-Rex uh, swimming around. It looks very smooth and I love the middle one there. You can see he's kind of swimming at an angle as well. So it's definitely not just forward backwards or just in a straight line. He's kind of swimming and turning, uh, going sideways. That top one, he's turning a corner. That bottom one is when he's going straight. So all different variations of swimming, I think is great. It's important to stress that we're not simply retreading old ground. Everything is being done in service of developing future behaviors like socializing, herding, hunting, and combat and hopefully escape animations as well. I, I don't remember if we actually heard about those as well, but I would hope that they would add those too. Of all your bug reports, feedback and requests have been an important part of designing what we want from this next stage of our animals. As much as we're sure you'd love to see the monotony of animation tables, excuse me, I don't know why that was so hard for me to say, mixers and a lot of editor tooling, not too much is ready for presentation at this stage. It is, however, a massive update and will take time. We will continue to share progress as systems evolve. What's in the pipeline? Donation boxes. So I love this. I'm just going to skip straight to the pictures because I'm so excited. We have different size donation boxes. We have small, a little bit bigger and then very big. And what I love about this is it sounds like the donation boxes are going to be integrated with the research system where you're going to have to unlock bigger ones and they're actually going to fill up and only be able to hold so many donations in a month. So for example, if you only have these little ones, say they only hold $100. Once they get to $100, they stay at $100 until the end of the month and they do not accept any more donations until they're emptied at the beginning of a new month. And then these guys say would hold $500 and then these guys would hold $1,000, so on and so forth. So that gives a really interesting mechanic to where donation boxes get placed, how many of them you have, all that kind of stuff. Obviously, if you have the larger ones, you can collect more money per month or you just might have to put down like, you know, 50 of these little ones to equal one of these. I don't know what the cost is going to be uh, equated for each of these, how much each of them is going to cost to place down. But I love the design, especially this little one here and these ones. I think these are going to be so easy to integrate into builds, hide them if you want to. This one kind of looks like a claw machine to me, but I, I love it. And the fact that you can see it looks like we're going to get a difference in the way that they look as they fill up. So they're actually going to be interactive in the game. At least that's what I hope. That's what I'm gathering from this picture where this one's like halfway full and this one's all the way full, you know, a little bit full, halfway full, things like that. This one doesn't have anything in it. 
So I'm very excited about the addition to uh, the game in donation boxes. For those of you that are familiar with challenge mode, you might know that donations already are a thing. Well, sort of. You see, donations in the current game provide a consistent flow of cash as long as there's an animal in the habitat. It was one of those systems that we knew was going to get a second pass to improve the game's simulation and management. So there you go. Moving on to rocks and styling. You guys know me, I'm always up for more rocks. And what we're gonna talk about next is something that I was actually asking for way, way, way back when I first got my hands on the game. I love the current in-game rocks, but I was hoping for some more variety, some different shapes, textures, things like that. And it sounds like exactly that is what they're going to be adding. In February, the art team got around to remaking all of our rocks to better complement our assets. So that's what we're going to talk about here. Uh, we have three, four pictures, I think. Um, I'm getting ahead of myself, though. Let me finish reading to make sure that I don't miss anything for you guys. These new versions make use of a uh, tiling t detail texture to prevent their up close fidelity, no matter how big or small you've scaled them. We've also included two brand new cladding pieces that are perfect for building flatter shapes like roofs, uh, like floors and walls. Excuse me. You can also build roofs with them as well. Very, very cool that they're adding these cladding pieces. Of course, everything in Prehistoric Kingdom is already scalable. So if you want to flatten in-game rocks already, you can. But this is just going to make it um, a little bit easier, but also probably look a little bit better as some of the bigger rocks, when you flatten and stretch them, the textures do hit a point where they start to stretch too much. Um, so this will just make the build look even better. It was important for us to keep the general shapes fairly close to our current rocks in order to preserve player builds. Some adjustments may be required depending on how you've used them in the past, but for the most part, they're pretty close. We're still working on how they look, so there will be some visual differences in the final release. So we've got these different pictures here. Love the mossy rocks. How cool do these look? And I really like the overall smoothness to these. The in-game rocks have very jagged and sharp uh, uh, shapes to them, and I like these a uh, little bit smoother to each of these rocks here. So it looks like we have moss, we have snow covered, which is very, very cool. And then uh, some desert rocks as well. Gorgeous, gorgeous screenshots as always. Now let's not take this next part for granted. Haha, -ha. this update will also be adding moss, sand and snow style rocks. Oh, okay, so these ones are sand style rocks, not desert style rocks. Uh, these three substrates will allow, will always appear, excuse me, on the top side of the rocks, no matter how you rotate or scale them. Each substrate is fully recolorable. So if red snow or purple sand is your jam, you're welcome. <laughs> That's awesome. I love that. It also uh, allows us to really put a lot of variety into our builds. So not all the moss I'm assuming is going to be, have to be the same color. You know, you can do darker, lighter, and really make details in your build. Same thing with the sand. I don't, maybe brownish snow, maybe dirty snow, that would be a thing, but I don't really see myself recoloring the snow rocks, but you never know, I might find a reason. And then I think last but not least, yeah, new animal. We have a brand new teaser. That's right, the first animal of 2023 is right around the corner. We're keeping it a secret for a little while longer, but if you're lucky, you might just get a new species spotlight trailer as we get closer to the release of this update. As mentioned earlier, we are still deep into overhauling the technical side of the animals. This will hopefully be the last creature to use the current animal systems before everybody is updated in a few months. So here is your task. In addition to letting me know if you're excited and what your favorite part about this update is or this dev diary is, what is this animal? I have such limited knowledge on prehistoric animals that I am never going to be able to guess what this is. So I rely on you guys down in that comment section. Let me know what you think it is. We also got two other sneak peeks at animals. So we're up to three 
uh, just little tidbits, little screenshots of up close images of those animals. So I'm really curious to see what you guys think. And then of course, as always, we have a community spotlight, some amazing creators uh, doing amazing builds. And that is going to be it for February's Dev Diary. I'm gonna go back up here and watch the little guys run around because this was my favorite part. <laughs> Watching the little animations of the dinosaurs kind of walk and trot and turn around. Very, very cool. So yeah, what do you guys think? Thank you so much if you've made it to this far, uh, this point in the video. This is what you guys get for me not uh, recording and redoing things. One take, one shot. My voice has just about had it, but I appreciate you guys hanging out, putting up with my scratchy sounding voice. I do have a few more videos uh, in the pipeline for the channel. Uh, one included is going to be a prehistoric kingdom build for the Dilophosaurus in a desert biome because I was very excited for that. So if you enjoyed, if you're excited, uh, or if you just want to support me, I greatly do appreciate it. Hit that like button and leave a comment below. And of course, hit the subscribe button, all the YouTube things. If you want to keep up with prehistoric kingdom or planet zoo or Jurassic world evolution, any of the games that we cover here on the channel, uh, that is what you should do, I guess. <laughs> Welcome to my very disjointed outro. Uh, moving on to other things. All my social media links are down in the description below. We have a new merch shop. If you want to check that out, description is below. And until next time, I will talk to you guys in the next video. Bye.